In this video, I'll go through Work Together, Problem 2-2, from page 54 of your Century 21 Accounting Advanced Textbook, Edition 11. So, what we have to know is we're journalizing and posting departmental cash receipts, and our terms that we're offering to these companies are 2% off if they pay within 10 days, the net will be due within 30. We also should know that sales tax is 7.5% and assume that sales tax is paid on all cash and credit card sales for this problem. CM credit memorandum. R is a receipt, sales invoice is an S, terminal summary is a TS. And let's start. So transactions in March. On the 3rd, we received cash on account from Andrews Homes for lumber purchased. $12,458.95 less the discount and receipt number 445. So cash receipts journal. Oh, I don't know what I did there. Okay. First date was, I believe, the 3rd of March. Andrews Holmes account title. Our document number was receipt 445. And our accounts receivable credit um, was the 12,458.95 that our textbook gave us. They did get a discount. So we'll take that accounts receivable amount times 0.02. 249.18. So the total amount of cash we got will subtract our cash debit 12209.77. So we can go ahead and post to Andrews Homes the 12458.95 in the accounts receivable ledger, but we won't post to sales tax, sales credit, sales discount debit, none of these until the very end as a total amount, right? Which is the benefit of using these specialized journals. So 12, 458.95, our accounts receivable ledger, the third, and it is an accounts receivable credit, 12, 458.95. We'll subtract from our normal debit balance, reduces the amount they owe us, right? And this was from cash receipts journal, um, page five. So, account number 110, we'll go back to our journal and put that in our posting reference, 110. Next problem, recorded cash and credit card sales for the week, hardware 3194.18, lumber 8418.69, plus sales tax. So, we'll go over here to our cash receipts journal, this was on the 4th. It's hard to make a check mark in a spreadsheet, so we'll just use an X and we won't post these specially either. So we'll put an X there. And sales credit for hardware, our book told us it was 31.94.18 and the lumber was 84.18.69. Oh, again, this was. Terminal summary number 12. So how much is our sales tax? Well, we're going to have to calculate that. So we'll add these two sales credits together and take that quantity times 0 0.075, 7.5%. So 87097, the cash we received. Debit must equal the total of your credits. So we'll add them all together. And there we go, 12483.84. Next one, received a check from a state housing for lumber on sale, 9248.17 minus this credit memorandum 44 discount of 833.02 plus the sales discount for paying early, receipt 446. So this one's a little more complicated on the 7th to estate housing and receipt 446 
the amount of accounts receivable, you'll actually subtract what our book told us those amounts were. So 92, 48, 17 minus the credit memorandum amount of 833.02, the total accounts receivable. Now they will get the uh, sales discount for paying early. So this amount times 0.02, 168.30. So the total amount of cash that we got from them is the 84.15 minus the 168.30, 82.46.85. So the only thing we would post now is the estate housing accounts receivable, 84.15.15. So we'll go over here to our accounts receivable ledger. The date is the 7th. So they did pay soon. It's only been four days since this memorandum, right? And... 84.15 is the credit amount, so we would obviously be zero. Now they don't owe us any more. And this was from Cash Receipts Journal, page five, posted to account 120. Put that here. So our next one is on the 18th. Received a check from Lisle, L-I-S-L-E, hmm. construction for hardware, 2473.61, less credit memorandum 45, 325.51, less the discount, receipt 447. Back to our cash receipts journal on the 18th. I call it Lyle Corp for construction, don't know how to pronounce it for real, receipt number 447, well, that was special, and this is where we get to do the math again on our accounts receivable credit, so our book told us it was 247361, minus their credit memorandum of 325.51, so 21.48.10. And then they got the discount. This time I believe it was for hardware. So this amount times 0 0.02, 42.96. So the total amount of cash received would be the 21.48 minus the 42.96, 21.05.14. We'll post to Lyle Corporation, 214810, in our accounts receivable ledger on the 18th. This was from Cash Receipts Journal, page 5. And 214810 looks like they paid off that balance. And... The suggestion was correct. Account number 130. We'll put that here. Let's see what our next item is. Recorded cash and credit card sales for the week. Hardware 4184.94. Lumber 6148.71 and sales tax. Terminal summary number 13. So on the 22nd. Then we'll just put an X here again and terminal summary number 13. We'll put an X here to show that we won't post these individually anywhere. And the amounts were for hardware, uh, 41.84.94 and for lumber, 61.48.71. So our sales tax payable we can just copy this formula if we want to, and if we paste right down here, it should use the correct row, and it does. So 775.02 is what it came up with for us. So our total cash in would be the sum of all of these credit amounts. 
And I believe that was our last item. Yep. So now we need to prove and rule the cash receipts journal and post the totals to the general ledger. So cash receipts journal, proving and ruling, we'll just go sum function equals sum. We'll add them together on the first column, use this corner to drag it over. And we'll maybe bold those totals. And I like to do the double underline down below. We'll write totals. And since it's the last day of March, there's 31 days. We'll bold those as well. So counts receivable credit 2302220. Go to our general ledger, accounts receivable credit on the 31st from cash receipts journal page five they had a debit of 2302220 so our new balance we'll subtract the whoops i put that in the wrong spot counts receivables this should have been a credit 2302220 20. We have, we got some of those outstanding amounts paid this month. So 79, 73, 94 left. Account number 1205. So we'll put that down here in parentheses to show that we posted it. And because this is a spreadsheet, um, if you just put a little asterisk behind it, it will stay in parentheses. Otherwise, the spreadsheet thinks it's a negative number. Okay, next one. Sales tax payable credit, $1,645.99. Back to our general ledger. Sales tax payable on the 31st. From crash receipts, page 5. Sales tax payable credit, $1,645.99. So we'll add to our credit balance. Account number 2110. And that one is posted. Sales credit for hardware, 73.79.12. You can always copy if you want to. And we'll go to our general ledger for sales credit hardware, sales on hardware on the 31st, cash receipts, page five, and the credit. Now it would come with formatting, so I'm going to paste special values only equals this previous credit plus the new one, account number 4105, cash receipts journal. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy our number for sales to lumber as a credit. So we'll go over here, sales lumber. Here it is on the 31st, cash receipts, page five. And we'll right click, paste special as value only. Apparently you could use control shift V. See if I could ever remember that. All right. We'll add that to the previous credit balance. 4205 was our account number. Sales discount debit for hardware. Um, I've only got about a minute left, so I'm going to post these last three and then just show you the final page here. I quickly posted without you. So here is what your cash receipts journal should look like, your ending balances and the account numbers you posted to. We'll go over to our accounts receivable ledger now. Ending balances, Andrews Homes, 235602. They still owe us at the end of the month. Uh, estate housing and Lyle Corp construction both paid off their balances in full. And in our general ledger, uh, after posting, cash should have a balance of 60743 Accounts receivable, 7973 Sales tax payable, 
sales hardware, discounts, and so on. You can see what those balances are.